Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Apologies for the lack of content lately, I've been busy with school. And also it's currently impossible to get any video card. But today, we have a very exciting build. It's my first ever mining rig for a client. Now I don't even know how this guy managed to get his hands on all of these cards. He has a sixth one on its way. Anyways, let's get to the build. First, you'll need a frame to hold all of your hardware. If you're an OG of this channel, you'll recognize this frame from years ago. Now if you don't have a frame, I have a tutorial linked in the description on how to build one. And a separate power button is a handy addition to the rig so you don't have to jump the pins to turn it on. Next, you'll need some riser cables. These are the SATA to 6 pin styles. And I try to stay away from the Molex style risers like the plague. Next, you'll need a motherboard. Ideally, a mining motherboard is the easiest to set up, but they're way overpriced currently. So here, I'm using an Asus. Prime Z390P, a basic 120GB Kingston SSD, a dual PSU adapter. Now you don't need this if you're running only one power supply. And if you are running two power supplies and don't want to buy an adapter, you can use just the paperclip to jump the green pin to any ground pin which is black. I'll have a link in the description on how to do that. Now if you're going to use the paperclip method, make sure you turn on the secondary power supply before you turn on the primary one. These are 8 pin splitters. Now these will be perfectly fine for the 3070s, since each card only draws 130 watts on these mining settings. And each 8-pin PCIe connector is capable of outputting 150 watts. So if you have two 8-pins per PCIe strand, which is typically the case, you'll be able to output around 300 watts per PCIe strand. Now I'm using these because I don't have enough connectors from the two power supplies, but the numbers work out in this situation. Now you do not want to daisy chain these connectors, that's a fire hazard. Next up, we have a basic 8GB stick of RAM and a basic i3-9100 CPU. Now here, we are using two Corsair TX750M gold rated power supplies with a standard 7 year warranty. Now the reason we went with two is because it's impossible to find anything over 850 watts for a reasonable price. Also, it's much easier to sell two smaller units versus a larger one. And for this application, it'll work since we will be loading up the secondary power supply with 4 cards for 520 watts. A rule of thumb is to only load up a power supply to 80% of its max capacity. So 600 watts is our target per power supply. For now, we'll be putting a 3060 on the primary power supply. Now my client didn't know the 3060 was locked, but there are hack drivers out there. He said he'll replace that with a 3080, and the 6th card was going to be a 3080 as well. Now each of those will draw around 200 watts, so we don't want to use any splitters for them. They'll have their own dedicated plugs. Alright, now that's out of the way, we can peel off the OG label and start assembling our rig. First, let's assemble the motherboard, pop the CPU in, put the sticker RAM in, and install the stock cooler. Next, we'll mount the board using gravity. And do not place the board on top of the static bag. You can use a sheet of cardboard if that makes you feel safer. I've ran my rigs like this for more than a year without issue. Next, let's open up the risers. Next, let's get the power supplies organized. So the only cables we need are one strand of SATA, two PCIe, and the non-removable 8-pin and 24-pin connectors per power supply. We'll connect three risers to each strand of SATA connectors for symmetry. Now for this setup, one power supply will have to face up and the other one will have to face down because of the location of the plug. We can keep most of the cables in their twist ties. Next, I connected the primary power supply, which is the face down one, to the motherboard. There is a plug in the top left, which is usually the 8 pin, then both 24 pins to the adapter, then to the motherboard. After that, I connected the SSD and the power button. Thank you. 
Now this next step is very crucial to get all your cards detected. You want to go into the BIOS and change the PCIe speed to Gen 1, enable above 4G decoding, change PCIe x16 underscore 1 link speed to Gen 1, and disable every SATA plug except for the one that you're using. And that is usually all you have to do. Install Windows Next with a bootable USB. In the power settings, you want to disable sleep mode and add your miner of choice to the exception list in Windows Defender. Lastly, in Windows, you'll want to go into Appearance, Advanced, change the virtual memory to the total amount that you have for each card. So if each 3070 has 8 gigs of VRAM and you had 4 of them, you'll need to set the custom size to 32,000 megabytes for the initial size and the maximum size. Now you can start plugging in your cards. Now I don't know if it's this board in particular, but when the 3060 was in the first slot, followed by the 3070s, it would not recognize the fifth 3070. Now what I had to do was swap the 3060 with the last 3070 in order to detect all of the cards. Now I recommend using the onboard graphics so you're not interrupting your cards while they mine. I applied a safe overclock of 60% power, plus 1100 on the memory, and a constant 55% fan speed. My client can tweak each card individually. Here are the settings that work for my 3070. You can also try to lower the fan speed if you have a good external fan blowing on them. And I highly recommend having a large fan blowing on the cards since it's a pain to source and replace the fans on the cards. Now we're off to the races. With these quick settings, we were able to get 60 mega hash per 3070, and without a hacked driver, we were able to get 20 mega hash for the 3060. On the day of recording, the profitability climbed to $36 off camera. In a year, it would be making 13,140 Canadian. The next day, he sent a picture with a profitability at $45 Canadian a day. Bitcoin was around 72,000 Canadian that day. And in 365 days, it would make $16,200. Given that the price of Bitcoin stays the same, but it never will. Thanks for making it this far in the video. Please consider subscribing and let me know what rig you are building in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one.